Next by 716, we are now going to look at intangible assets. As we, as time goes by, we need to amortize the intangible assets. Just like property, plant, and equipment are depreciated, intangible assets are amortized. The good thing is for all intangible assets, the amortization method that is used is a straight line method, makes that relatively easy. You tend to have a complication with intangible assets, and this is defending your intangible assets. You're likely to spend a lot of money in legal fees, and we'll see what happens with that. So on Jan 1st, 2024, we purchased a patent for $237,000. The remaining legal life is 20 years, so we bought it as soon as someone got the patent. But the company estimates the patent will be useful only for six years. So I'm going to amortize it over six years. In January 2026, this is two years later, we incurred legal fees of $57,000 in successfully defending a patent infringement suit. The successful defense did not change the company's estimated useful life for the patent. Our year end is December 31st. So let's write down the basic information. I paid $237,000 for the patent, so that's my original cost. I acquired it on 1124. I estimate the useful life to be six years. The amortization method, as always, is going to be straight line method. So the amortization expense per year is going to be 237 divided by the six years. So we have amortization expense is going to be 237 divided by six. So 39,500. So let's do the journal entries here as we're going along. The day we buy the patent, it's patent debit, cash credit, and the dollar amount is 237. Now, on the 31st, we are amortizing the patent. So amortization expense debit. Now, when you, if you recall for depreciation, we said depreciation expense debit, accumulated depreciation credit, and accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. For patents, we don't do that. For patents, we directly credit the patent account. So our amount over here is going to be 39,500. So the first year, the patent, the original amount, original cost is debited. At the end of the first year, we are going to credit the amortization. We're gonna post that number from the amortization journal entry. And we had our book value is down to 197,500. That becomes the book value in the second year. Okay. My journal entry in the second year, same thing, amortization expense debit, patent credit, and the dollar amount is the same. The second year, we continued with the same straight line method. So we are now down to 158. 158 is the beginning number for the third year. Now what happened in the third year? My book value at this point of time is the 158, the number that we saw over here, the 158. We spent another $57,000 defending the patent. This number, 57,000, is going to be added to the cost of the patent. And how do we do that? We're gonna write patent debit, cash credit, and this is for the $57,000 in legal fees that we are paying. We don't debit legal fees expense. We're just saying patent debit, cash credit. We are adding it to the cost of the patent. So the patent is $215,000. So this $215,000 is the new book value. Now, what is the remaining life of the asset? Original life for six years, we have amortized for two years, so remaining life is four years. That does not change, okay? So at the end of this year, my journal entry is amortization expense debit, patent credit, now it's just 215,000 that I will amortize over four years, and that's going to be 53,750. It's going to be 
this number divided by four. Let me put that up there. 5370. That's the amortization expense. So I amortize 53750, bringing down the number to 161250. So when you see this number going up from 158, it goes up to 215. It's not like the value of the patent went up, it's just the cost of the patent went up. I spent on defending my patent and I was successful. Only if you're successful in defending the patent, the lawsuit, it gets added. If you lost the case, then you're not going to add that cost. That just is an expense. So this journal entry over here doesn't indicate that I got one more patent. It just says my patent is that much more expensive because I had to spend money to defend my patent. So these legal expenses are always a big number which is why we are allowed to capitalize the cost of the legal fees. So with that, we'll move on to the last exercise for this chapter.